Hello there, it's Andy Ewans from Former Surf once again. Here in our second video, we are continuing our bite-sized training on writing bash scripts for our IBMI. It is well worth knowing how to write bash scripts for our day-to-day -day working on the IBMI, just as we use CL programming. In this section of writing bash scripts, we'll be covering how we can condition bash to execute code under certain conditions. If you missed our previous video in this series, using variables and arguments in bash scripts, it can be found on our channel. Please subscribe to my channel to be notified when our next video in this series has been released. Let us get this topic started. So, the first one on the list, if blocks. I'm sure you're all aware of what an if does. But just to recap, if a test is true, then execute a set of commands up to the fi command. So the fi ends our if block. If the test is not true, skip the commands in the block. Moving on to our first example. Let me give you the spec. Always a good place to start. Our script would expect to be run passing a number into it. It will then check if that number is greater than 50. If it is, run an echo statement. If it is not, check if the number is equal to 50. If it is, then run another echo statement. And if it is not, then run another echo statement. So this script will check a number we pass into the script and run some ifs, l ifs and else commands and echo out the results. A simple script, but a good example to start with. For this example, the commands we will be using are if, check if something is true, the syntax is square brackets with a condition in the middle, then do whatever. Then we have l if, the else if command, if the previous command had failed, use another one to check some other condition. Then the else command, if the previous command failed, then run these commands. And finally, to round things off, fi which will close our condition in block. Let me switch over to VS Code. The first line is our shebang. Next we have number equal, no spaces remember, dollar one. Then into our if block, if in square brackets, dollar number dash gt for greater than 50, close off the square brackets, then echo number is greater than 50. The next line, L if, square brackets again, dollar number dash equal EQ to 50, close brackets, then next line, echo number is equal to 50. Then we have an else statement, echo number is less than 50. And we wrap that up with the fi block. So just to recap, we're checking if the number is greater than 50, if the number is equal to 50, and then take it by default. If it's not one or the other, it must be less than 50. Now over to my bash window and type in number.sh, remember the sh, 55. That looks okay. Run it again, this time passing 50. Looks okay. Run it again, this time with 44. All looking good. Our first if coding out of the way. Let me now change this script to test to see if the user passes an argument into the script. This will use a basic if statement to check if we have an argument or a parameter as we know them. If square brackets space and the exclamation mark, which is the not symbol, dollar one, space square bracket, then echo, you haven't told me which number to check. Then on the next line, we use the exit command with a minus one to stop the script from running any further. And we round it off again with an fi to stop the block. Back to our bash session to test it. Now if I type number.sh without any parameters, it gives me an error message and stops processing. Just what we want. Now moving on to what Bash calls conditional expressions. 
If in an if statement we code minus E file name, it will return true if that file is found. If we use the minus X flag and file name, it will return true if the file is found and it is executable. And minus F file name will check that the file is a regular file. For example, it is not a directory. These are the most common ones, but not a complete list by a long way. Let me give you an example of these. Let me switch over to VS Code. I'll create a new script called fileExist.sh in VS Code. This script will check if a file exists using the minus F conditional expression. As always, first line is a shebang. Then a hash for a comment. Well done, Andy. If, open brackets, space, minus F, and then in quotes, dollar one, space, and the square brackets, semicolon, then, this is a different way of starting an if block, but very common. Then an echo, the file exists. Then, a straightforward else. Echo, the file does not exist. And to finish the block off with an FI. It's that simple. As always, we better give it a test before we move into production. Joking! Over to our shell, type fileexist.sh, passing a parameter of andy.sh, which does exist. So that's all correct. I'll run it again. This time I'll try andy.abc. All correct, as that doesn't exist. I hope that's helped you. Now moving on to bash case statements. Bash case statements are similar to if else statements, but are easier and simpler in my opinion. It helps match one variable against several values. It is used when you require the if else statements with a number of else if statements, all very similar to select statements in either CL or RPG. The syntax is as follows. The case statement starts with case, C-A-S-E. To end a case statement, we use the ESAC, backwards case, just like the end block of an if statement was F-I. Very clever, I do like that. The right bracket is used to terminate a check pattern. If a pattern is matched, then the following set of commands up to double semicolons are executed. Much easier to show you in an example. Let's go back to VS Code. In this example, we will ask the user to input a month name. The bash script will then check what's going on in that month and echo a statement about that month. If all the months are checked and there are no entries for that month, a default message will be echoed. Firstly, we have our good old shebang. The next command we're going to have is shopt, so it doesn't match cases in our case statement. It'd be more obvious when we get down to that line. The next one is an echo. Enter the name of the month you want to check. We then read the month. And now we go into our case statement. So beginning, case. Dollar month is the variable we're going to check, which is what the user input is in. And the first case statement is January, ending with a close bracket. And if it is January, it will then produce the echo statement right down to the two semicolons. Then it will check if it's April. It will check if it's May. The May one actually produces two echoes, so we can have a blocker code there if we want to. Then August, November and December. And then right at the end, the asterisk with the closed brackets is the default. So if it falls all the way through, it will then come up and say, echo, nothing going on in this month. Two colons, semicolons, and then ESAC to end the case block. And back to our shell, let's type in case.sh. First thing it's going to do is ask us for the name of the month. So if we put in January, it comes up and said it's a bank holiday in the UK for the 3rd of January. If we run it again and put in a month that's not there, so if we put in 
March. Nothing going on in this month. So you can see how it's going through each of the statements. If it's not catching anything by the time it hits to the end, it hits the asterisk, it will then echo what's going on in there. Using case statements makes your program a lot easier to read than having ifs, elses, elifs and fi. They are well worth making use of. And that wraps up this topic on conditioning in Bash. I hope you enjoyed it. Look out for our next topic in this mini-series, Using Loops in Bash. Subscribe to our channel to be informed when the next video is available. Thank you. If you need any further details about Open Source or IBMI, check out all our videos at learning.formaserve.co.uk and the articles we have written for powerwire.eu. I hope you find them useful and let us know if there are any other topics you want us to cover. Even through these difficult times, my company, Formaserve, is still providing training on our favourite platform, the IBMI. Whether it's remotely, through a mask, we are still here for you. If it's traditional programming using RPG and CL, or the modern methods of integrating open source into your infrastructure, we are here to help. We have over 30 years of teaching on the IBMI. Why not use us to get up to date and be at the forefront of the post-pandemic world? Formaserve uses Microsoft Teams software to develop top-notch training material. Take a look, you will not be disappointed. As many students have found, all our training is very informal, it's the way to learn. Find out what it's like to have fun while training. And that wraps up this quick video. Thank you for watching our How To on IBM I video set. I hope you found them useful. Keep checking out our website, learning.formaserve.co.uk and our YouTube channel. We regularly add new ones. Stay safe and we'll see you soon. Thank you.